Hi, welcome to lecture 26. This lecture follows on from the previous one about partitions and looks at load-bearing partitions. In the previous lecture we looked at different types of internal partitions, load-bearing and non-load-bearing. This lecture will show a step-by-step -step construction of a load-bearing partition. Some of the elements will be familiar to those who have watched the foundation detail lectures, so if you haven't watched them you might want to do that first. So the first step in a load-bearing partition is to create a strip foundation trench. So we need to clear the site and get a digger in and dig a trench under the line of the partition. Into this trench we would pour concrete to form our foundation. And this may or may not have reinforcement depending on the design. And onto that we would build a single leaf of blockwork built up from the foundation up to the finished floor level. So the block needs to be the same width as the structural partition above. If our partition is going to be made of 100mm timber, therefore we would need 100mm of block work. At that point we can then backfill either side with compacted type 1 hardcore, taking care to go up in layers of no greater depth than 150mm. And of course, because hardcore's got a jagged surface, we would blind that with 50mm sand to smooth it off. Onto the blinding, we can add a DPM, so a damp proof membrane going across the floor, and that would wrap up over the top of the substructure wall and lap and be sealed with a DPC. And now we've got everything watertight with our DPM and DPC, we could add insulation over the top. And finally, top it all off with a concrete floor slab that would come up to the level of the substructure wall. Onto that, we can add our timber framing element, so we'd put our bottom rail and fix it back down through the substructure wall. And depending on what type of partition we use, and if you refer back to the previous lecture on acoustic partitions, um, in this example we're using a single layer of plasterboard with internal insulation, we can add those two things in place. To make our floor a little bit more comfortable and less noisy, we would put a separating membrane on top of the concrete slab and then maybe put floor battens down. The separating membrane is there to stop any chemical reaction between the concrete and timber battens. And then onto the battens we can add flooring boards or chipboard for carpet or whatever flooring we're going to finish with and add a skirting board which covers the joint between the wall and the floor. So key points to note is that a foundation is required under a load-bearing partition so that the loads can be carried downwards and passed to the ground. A substructure wall of concrete block is built below the partition and this should be the same width as a partition above. A DPC is required under the bottom rail of the partition framing to stop moisture from the ground reaching the timber. Acoustic performance is required of the partition in that this can be achieved by one of the constructions shown in the previous lecture. And finally, a skirting board is installed to the base of the partition to cover the joint between the bottom of the plasterboard and the floor. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, as always, please let me know.